Hey everybody, it's your good friend Lukey, and I recently wrote a book, Inside the Ropes of Boxing, with a foreword by Jill Diamond of the WBC Cares. Oh, that's me right there. Anyways, it's on Amazon. Be sure to check it out. How you doing, Floyd? I'm doing good. I'm good. Talk about this moment. Headlining this card, big car, Golden Boy Promotions. Um, kind of break it down for me. Um, it's pretty big for me. It's a, it's a dream come true. And I'm like, I'm over here working hard and doing what I got to do to put on a great performance for everybody coming out. And I'm just anxious right now. So one thing I want to talk about with you and your father is what was the role of Bernard Hopkins playing in the signing of Golden Boy Promotions? And can you elaborate on that? Also considering Bernard's my favorite fighter. That one's for you. Um, Bernard, really, um, Oscar was the one that got the signing. We didn't really meet Bernard until after the fight. Then he came up and he said that he would be working with us, you know, hands on with Floyd to help develop him. Well, what does that feel like? That's one of the greatest modern boxers to be like, hey, man, I want to be hands on. And it's like he basically fought for my whole adult life. Like, it's a pretty big honor. Yeah, um, it's crazy because seeing him watching him, like I would watch him a lot growing up. And for him to tell me that and like, you know, to tell me I'm a great fighter, like it didn't feel real at all until like, you know, a week later, I'm like, man, that just happened. <laughs> not to be arrogant but you have to kind of know you're a great fighter because you're on these big stages you're getting respect from other people you're good at a national level but does it mean a little bit more when it's like these like a hall of fame level fighter saying it yeah for sure like because it's like these are the people that you idolized growing up and like they're telling you that you're a great fighter and then you're thinking of them like you know y'all are the kings of the sport so like to hear that coming from um, them, it's like, man, I'm, I must be something. Okay. And for this fight is the goal. Obviously, no one goes in to knock someone out. But are you trying to make a statement and get a clip for the internet to be like, here I am, I'm on this stage? Most definitely. I, I think this camp, we've been working towards getting that knockout. And I believe we will. Um, but like you said, we're not just going in there with a game plan to knock them out because you never know it might go all the rounds and you know we might have to adjust and put on a great performance with him still being in there but I trained super hard this is probably one of my hardest camps like I'm ready to knock him out <laughs> question for your father how has how have you seen the development of Floyd from turning pro to doing these shows doing it your own way to go, being now with Golden Boy Promotions how has the journey been so far but the journey been great. You know, I got to watch him from a baby all the way up to now and I'm still seeing him grow. Like, I believe he's only at 80% of his potential. He's still growing. He's not at 100% yet. But um, this fight, I don't see the guy going past three miles. Okay, I like that. I like bold pl proclamation. That's one of my favorite things. Uh, Golden Boy Promotions has done a good job with fighters like Ryan Garcia, Virgil Ortiz. They're both p big power punchers. That kind of comes to mind when I look at you is Robert Diaz, Golden Boy, Oscar, everyone, Eric Gomez. They have really found a way to kind of market and get a power puncher in front of the eyes of the public. Is that something that you think about kind of having that system behind you? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I basically did like the worst form of a question. I just said a lot right, of words. No, You're basically like, yeah, <laughs> like that's uh, when you know you messed up. We we glad they're giving us the platform. They're giving us the platform for him to show his abilities because I believe regardless of who put him on, he was going to be able to show that he's one of the greatest fighters of all time as he grow. Um, so I'm glad it was Golden Boy. That gave us the opportunity because they developed like they didn't develop Floyd, but Floyd Mayweather fought on on their platform. Dante Wilde and all these other people fought on their platform and they made them into stars. Broner, Jojo mm -hmm. Diaz, like, I mean, very good track record of building guys up. And what I like about Golden Boy is they make people take hard fights mm -hmm. kind of early. So guys have to be seasoned. And I'm a little old school. I don't want to see people just beating guys they know they can beat to get themselves in a title position. I think you really 
fighting for a world title should mean something. And I think we're kind of devaluing that currently. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, we want the hard fights. That's that's one of my, why I went over there. I didn't want him to have cab drivers. Then he go fight an A-level fighter and he risked his life in there because they didn't school him and let him gradually get where he needed to get um, being a great fighter. Well, let me ask you this, because we we're kind of beating around the question that I kind of, I guess we're speaking on is what what made both of you decide to go with Golden Boy? Was it the decision, the opportunity, the platform, or were there other things? Basically explain to me just very clearly why that was the best option for you. I, I thought it was the best option because Oscar hit me up personally. Like, you know, nobody, no other promoter did that. Like it meant something. And then um, just on top of that, like they gave me everything I wanted in the contract. Like I, you can't say no, like that would be the, that'd be pretty stupid to be like, nah, I'm gonna go see what somebody else is going to offer me, you know, if they gave me everything. So for them to do that, that's like, like, why not? Like it was a big step. Well, my plan was always to go with Golden Boy. Like I told him before Al Heyman and all them sent contracts, I said, we're going to be with Golden Boy because they got two legends there that know boxing and understand boxing and that could help him hands on to groom him into the fighter that I need him to become. Okay. I mean, Ed, what I'm hearing from you, Floyd, is dignity and respect. Oscar reached out and he he showed respect to you as a fighter and that meant a lot when there were all these offers that the actual like the head honcho would reach to you out personally mm -hmm. yeah like because I never in my life thought Oscar De La Hoya would ever hit me up saying like I can make you a star like that's crazy you know because like he was a gold medalist world champion like I idolized him, you know, I had my favorite fighters, but he was probably in the top 10, like, you know, it was just an amazing feeling. And at first I didn't believe it. I was like, nah, that's not him. That's a fake, that's a fake account. And I click on it and I see it's real. And I'm like, okay, you know, I can make this work. And like my dad said, he's been telling me since I was like 12 years old, like, we're going to go to Golden Boy. I'm like, eh, you know, cause I always thought I was going to be on TMT, but I'm glad we came to Golden Boy. <laughs> you prophesized it. So I want to know about this father-son duo. Obviously been very good for a very long time. How is the father-son duo going? Because we, we've had a lot of great fighters that are formed out of this father-son relationship. How is that evolving as trainer, coach, and father? That's all we know. I mean... That's all we know. We always been in the gym since he was a baby, two years old. I always been coaching him, but I brought Ronnie Shields in to assist me because there's things I don't know in boxing. And so he's guided me. Um, but, and as a father, you got to adapt with your son because it, at one time, you know, you're the one governing their life. As they get older, you know, you got to fall back a little and allow them to grow as they become the man. So it's fun. It's, it's neat watching my son grow up. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because that's something I struggle with sometimes is like you have to set all the rules and then you have to s fall back. Do you ever catch yourself kind of like being like, oh, I got to fall back a little bit now or some of those type of things? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we, we would bump heads like any father son um, duel because, you know, he's 20 now. And so he want to be the man. He want to make the decisions. And as a parent, sometimes, you know, it ain't the right decision for them to make at that time but you gotta allow them to go through the experience without jeopardizing themselves, but you gotta give them that little bit of rope to make that decision. And so it's fun because otherwise we'll bump heads if I try to, you know, manage the whole time. <laughs> so. Wait, what, speak on that. What, what were you saying? I said like with my tattoo, like, like I was asking for a tattoo since I was like 15, I was like, I just wanna get one. Now I ended up with two and I'm going to get another one. But that was something he eventually fell back on. And like, you know, it's something I always wanted. So I let him get his little control. He let me get my tattoo. So I was like, all right, you know, why not? It's fair exchange. I think it's great seeing like every time I've spoke with you, you're always together and you're always a team. And I just feel that you both 
care so deeply about each other and it feels like you both mean so much to each other in your lives. So I just really appreciate that you're making it work because it's just nice to see you together. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. We've been through a lot together. I mean, we all we got, you know, so we're going to ride this all the way out together and life together. You know? Well, I mean, I think it's very real and it's very honest and you can just see it. And I think that it connects with people. Yeah, that is very true. I mean, I got his face on my leg. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, he got two tattoos. He tattooed his tattoos was he wanted me tattooed on his legs. So I was like, no, why would you do that? I'm here. I'm not dead. Why are you gonna you know, put me on your legs? But that's his thing. He loved he, I guess he loved me. That's his way of showing it. Okay. Final thing, because I'm going a little over, but I'm going to give you one last thing is I just want you to kind of get people excited for this fight. It's a headlining fight. It's a very exciting fight. It's, I don't want to say it's the biggest fight of your career, but it is the biggest fight of your career, at least to me of where you're at in the position. Let's say someone knows a little bit about you from that. How are you going to sell yourself, both of you for this, what's coming up and what can the expectations be for this fight? Uh, so basically, y'all going to see an amazing fight. Um, <laughs> if somebody is going to sleep and it's not me and just like, just tune in. You gotta, you gotta find out for yourself. Cause like, if you don't tune in and you miss it, it's, it's gonna, it's not going to be as good as it is live. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not the same. And no. you're a big puncher. You're a big puncher. Yeah, most definitely. People people sleep on it, you know, you know, because like I like to show my boxing skill more than just, you know, throw all with power. But this fight I've trained to, you know, throw nonstop power as much as I can. So it's definitely going to be an amazing fight. And I think that this is the first step for us to get that Pitbull Cruz fight because he got the belt we need to get to get to the world titles. And I think we want to fight all the champions, but they making us go through these little steps first. So I told him he got to make a statement. We got to make a statement for us to get that cruise fight. So. Well, I love the fact that you've already mastered media where like you figured out what the headline for this story is going to be. Like <laughs> Showfield wants Pitbull Cruise. That'll get the clicks, you know, yeah. if it's, yeah. if it's, I'm fighting so-and-so. So I like that you're, you're, what did Denzel Washington say? Fa dream big, fail big. I like that you're thinking big rather than just putting it there. So that's awesome to hear. Thank yes, you. Sir.